Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Ranking mem Member. Uh, appreciate you being here. Thank you. Uh, you know, I was just out in Colorado. We held a small business subcommittee hearing, and the constant rejoinder that we heard uh, through that was government regulation uh, that was not a stepping stone to success and to be able to create jobs, but it was a stumbling block. In fact, you may have seen this. A uh, report just came out, a uh, recent study, and it's showing that the regulatory burden on the American people costs approximately $1,750,000,000,000 annually. Uh, that's with full knowledge. We need some regulations. Uh, but the overreach of this, when we get this down to actual dollars, when we're talking about creating jobs, which is something that the President has indicated that he's in favor of, I'm certainly in favor of doing, is we're seeing $160,000 each year the businesses are having to pay for regulatory costs. When we distill that down to small businesses, according to this report, each employee each employee, the business is having to pay $10,585 for regulatory costs per employee. Uh, this must stop. Uh, we are, and, and I, I truly respect your comment of trying to clean it up, and maybe we really need some legislation because when you're talking about President Reagan, you're talking about President Obama, we're actually looking at executive orders as opposed to legislative direction. Uh, that's coming out. But I, I do have a question. Uh, reading through your testimony, I, I want to go back actually to the milk regulations uh, that you would brought up. I am very curious uh, because you state that, um, and I, this perplexes me, that the EPA estimates, you would noted this was a, a law and uh, you just clarified with the regulation, but you further stated that this milk exemption will actually save our economy over $700 million over the next five years. How can we save what we never spent, what was never incorporated? Uh, okay. There's a, a lot of great points there, so can I s say a little bit? In terms of the, the report, the $1.75 trillion report, the general concern that regulatory costs on small business and the economy are too high and that we should be doing a lot to reduce those costs, I agree with completely. Mm -hmm. That $1.75 trillion figure is is in the nature of an urban legend, as a report uh, by the Congressional Research Service recently laid out. It is based on an assumption, of some analysis of a World Bank study that confuses regulatory quality and regulatory stringency. And if the study is right, then the U.S. GDP would be higher if we had a regulatory system like Sweden and Canada. Mm -hmm. And I don't think anybody thinks that is true. So uh, the $1.75 trillion probably to say it should be treated with a grain of salt is, is, is too weak. It should be treated as, you know, uh, not a reliable number. Uh, having said that, the general thrust of your question I completely agree with. On the milk rule, um, what happened was there was a, a, a formal requirement in the law that the milk producers be subject to this uh, oil spill rule. And we had heard, as the Bush administration had heard from the agricultural community, this is a, a looming serious problem for us. Enforcement, as I understand it, of the requirements of the milk producers was, uh, was uh, weak for understandable reasons. It just didn't make much sense. But no one had taken care of the problem. And this was a very significant cost. How does that still save $700 million that was never spent? That is oh, oh, uh, the claim a, that you were making. Because it was a regulatory requirement imposed on them that would have Im imposed burden. Would have, but it wasn't. So well, how are we claiming $700 no, million in no, savings? It, it would have in the sense that the formal law required it. And if we hadn't done anything about it, un under the formal law... The so it was, it's, it's really, a f and when we are talking about an urban legend, the $700 million in savings is actually... No, that's an, that's an accurate number. And the, uh, the agricultural community, which celebrated with great enthusiasm uh, what the EPA did to take away that cost, oh, didn't, deni didn't deny that the cost was taken away. They had worked for years to get the cost taken away. You know, you are right in one sense. The, cost, the, the, the requirement of the law wasn't being enforced. So what it was meaning on the ground is a reasonable yeah. question to ask. Nonetheless, the industry's own plea and ultimate very enthusiastic reaction yeah. uh, is suggestive that there was a problem that yeah. needed to be solved. And I can say, while the Bush administration commendably started the effort that we completed, our final rule was actually significantly more deregulatory than the Bush proposal. 
You know, I, I running out of time, but I know you've got a complex job, but we're looking at 3,573 new final rules, and you're talking about the complexity of you, and it's your job keeping up with it. How in the world can small business keep up with this? Because we are creating uncertainty. Oh, I completely agree that the, there's the problem. Uh, 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 3,507 new final rules, I'd wonder where that comes from. We, in the last two and a half years, the rules that have been through my office aren't that numerous. In fact, we've finalized fewer rules in our first two years than the Bush administration did on average in its uh, eight. Nonetheless, I, the concern that there should be uh, great care and a reduction in regulatory complexity and uncertainty, that's um, something the President has uh, directed us to do. And I, I'd love to get your ideas about how we can make the look-back process as um, effective and full as, as, it, as it could possibly be. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I yield back time I don't have. <laughs> so, <thanks. laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just had just a couple other questions. Uh, as I was listening to your comments in terms of inviting us, and, and it goes back to uh, Congressman Butler's uh, statement as well, in terms of the look back that's going on, the, does it really, when we're hearing about all of the challenges that small businesses in particular are facing, uh, very very shallow pools of money to be able to pay in, and they're paying it out for regulations? Does, does it really make sense to you that the only real look back going on right now is the same agency that created the rules? Well, uh, I, I take your point. Uh, the way the process works is a, a, a little better than that, I think, mm -hmm. that the agency that's doing the look back per uh, OIRA guidance actually is strongly encouraged to make sure that the rulemaking uh, officials aren't the ones looking at the rules for your reason, that within the agency there's a kind of separation between the rule makers and the rule evaluators. That's the first point. The second point is that the look back process has been greatly informed not by the agency's own soul searching, but by engagement with the public that's subject to the rules. So there's a process you may know about called Startup America, and I've actually traveled myself to ask members of the small business community what's causing problems. And a lot of the ideas on the rules, and in a number of cases this is specifically called out, they don't come from the agencies themselves. They come from members of the public who've said, this is causing a problem for us. Uh, the milk one to which you referred, the, the source of the concern was the agricultural industry. Uh, we have a rule in eliminating uh, redundant air pollution control requirements imposed on local gas stations, and the gas stations have said this is a very good thing. So it's not just the agency's own internal mechanism. It's also a process within the executive branch. In some cases, members of Congress have said this is something you should look back at. This is a cause for concern. The fiduciary rule, which has been revisited, it isn't look back in the same sense of eliminating rule on the books, but it is a look back in the sense of reassessing a proposal. And that was many members of Congress said that the Department of Labor were worried about costs and benefits and unintended adverse consequences. Well, you know, I certainly want to echo the thought if you want to try uh, something experimentally before you go active with rules, right. bring, the, bring them back to the committee, right. and uh, we'd take a look. Well, uh, yeah, one other point that I would, uh, we did hold a subcommittee hearing uh, that I'd, I'd had the privilege of being able to chair, and it was in regards to the GEPSA rule. Uh, there have been three recent studies that have been uh, conducted showing that uh, the costs on the GIPSA rule uh, will well exceed uh, $100 million, which crosses the threshold uh, to have this re-examined examined by the agency. Are you looking back at the GIPSA rule now? Uh, not the slightest doubt. And the, the Department of Agriculture is very much engaged in assessing costs and benefits. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You'll be